Now we're going to have a look at capturing shadows of invisible objects in elevation, sections or floor plans. In this case, we're looking at a situation where this pink building here is a fairly tall building being built across the street from some existing buildings. And we know that it's going to cast some shadows or overshadow the elevations on the buildings on this side. However, if we set up an elevation looking at the existing buildings, even if we do set up the shadows, the only shadow that we're going to see is the self-shadowing of those buildings because the taller building is totally invisible in this elevation. So I'm going to turn the shadows off again for now. We can see in a 3D view of this or perspective view of this scene you can clearly see that the shadow is going across the street and to the front face of these other buildings. To capture these shadows there's a few things that are advisable that can be done and that would make them easier. To start with you should set up the front elevations of the buildings of which we want to capture the shadows of to a solid colour avoiding any hatch pattern or fill pattern and possibly a colour that contrasts with all other colours in the scene. And this is only a temporary measure so it can be done on a copy of a file or within the file because it can be un it should be undone. So I'm just going to set this to blue and the next thing that we're going to suggest is turn off things that are irrelevant for example a footpath on the road sometimes the whole process may run into a bit of a glitch as additional shadows may be picked up so I could just turn off a couple of layers here as a temporary measure once again so we've just got the buildings and the shadows showing in a generic axometric view I'm going to set up a view that looks at the back of our building through our building at the faces of the existing buildings where we want to show the shadows which is basically the same as the elevation but we're actually going to see at the tall building as well so in the axonometric view I'm going to click on 3D projection settings and set it up as an elevation side view and put the camera up the top there and push OK the next step is to capture the actual shadows so I'm going to do this by using the marquee tool with the flat two-dimensional marquee at the end there so we're going to draw a window around the area that we want to capture the shadows from and go to edit copy or control or apple C now in here we want to capture just the shadows no construction elements just the shadows only polygons and then the type of polygons it has to be set to overlapping polygons. Calculate split polygons as the little icon explains here. If there were two shadows overlapping each other in elevation, the top shadow, the shadow closer to us would trim the shadow behind it. If we set this function we would not actually see the shadows behind our new building. So we have to say overlapping polygons which means every single shadow will be triggered separately and if there are two or more overlapping each other they will all generate in their full size without any clipping happening at all so once we've got all that we say OK and I'm going to cancel the marquee go to the elevation now in the elevation we still don't have the road because that's still turned off I'm going to say edit paste and you will notice that our shadows are actually pasted behind the elevation so before I proceed I'm just going to move them up say say 12 meters just so that we can see them and we're going to confirm the position by clicking somewhere in the white space and I'm going to select all the polygons and set the display order to bring to front so we know that if we move them back in front of our buildings they'll stay in front of the buildings the next step is to separate the actual shadows in which we are interested in which will be relevant for us the beige and grey shadows are actually the shadows 
of our new building, the proposed building, these are getting cast back onto itself. So these are basically self-shadowing. So we need to get rid of, of all the shadows except for the blue ones. The easiest way to do that would be to select one of the blue ones and see what colour it is. It's colour number 33. And you'll see for the background colour an icon showing you the red, green and blue colours. That basically telling us that this colour doesn't necessarily comply to any of the colours in the colour palette. It's not really important, it's just good to know. So we can see the colour of our shadow here is colour 33. And then we can do this. Go to the Fill tool, go Command A or Control A, Apple A on an Apple. And it will select all the fills in this particular elevation. Then we go to Find, Control F or Command F. And find me all the fills that have the pen color of 33. And then we're going to say instead of add, we want to delete them from the selection. So now the fills that are not 33 will be selected. So we can hit delete and that way we only keep the shadows that we're actually interested in. So now I can select all those shadows and simply drag them back to where they belong on the drawing. And this is the extent of the shadows of our new building on the existing buildings. Of course you could use semi-transparent shadows and image fills to make it look a, to make it look as pretty as you wish, but the procedure of capturing the shadows remains exactly the same. In a similar way, we're going to try and capture our sun penetration into the ground floor lobby of this building. It's basically the same procedure to capture the areas that are in shade and the sun penetration would be unshaded. Obviously, if we look at the building from the top in the 3D axonometric view, we can't see the ground floor. So it's basically catching the shadow of an object which is sitting in front of the shadow, covering the shadow. We'll start by going to the ground floor and we're going to set up a color for the ground floor slab. So we're going to set that to something that's very clearly recognizable. Maybe just like in the previous example, I'm going to switch that material to blue. In many cases, when you have floors on top of each other, you actually won't be able to see the color of the shadow which is casting onto the floor. So it's a good idea to make a copy of the slab of the floor somewhere outside the constraints of the building so it's half in shade and half in the sun. In my case if I put it up here I, I know that the shadow will be cast into the middle of the building there and we can confirm that here. There it is there and the copy with the change material is always blue so in case our ground floor slab is completely covered you can pick up the color of the shadow from this additional copy here just a bit of a safety measure the next step is to go to the generic axonometric go to the top view and set up the camera and the sun to where it should be then make sure you're on the internal 3D engine and vectorial hatching off transparent shading has to be turned to on so that the glass will allow the light into the buildings. In the previous example we had it turned to off so we could catch the shadow on the surface of the windows but now we actually want the window see through and the vectorial sun shadows we also want to turn that off push OK. Once again we're going to grab the marquee, grab the 2D rectangular marquee, just going to draw a marquee around the area where we want to capture the shadows and edit copy, no construction elements, once again we want polygons, overlapping polygons and push OK. The main reason we can do this all the time is the computer's not that smart it doesn't know, even though we're looking at the building from the top, it doesn't know that the person looking at the model from the top can't see the bottom floor. So 
The same way you try and limit the depth of elevations and sections because the computer will calculate all the information even though you can't see it. It's doing that here as well. So even though we're looking at the roof, it's calculating the shadows and the furniture and absolutely everything in that model all the way down to the ground floor. So now we'll get rid of the marquee, go to the ground floor plan and simply paste the shadow back. Then left mouse click outside the marquee to confirm the position of the shadows. If the, if the shadows disappear behind the site, move them to the side, bring them to the front and then you can put it back. In our case, because the first floor plan has a mezzanine over the bottom story, we can actually see part of the slab and there's the colour just there, that's the colour of our shadow just there. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to pick the fill, check its colour. We can see it's 33 again. So now I can go to the fill tool by going Apple A or Control All. Click on Find and Select again. And this is remember this from the previous session. But we find all fills with a pen colour of 33 and remove them from the current selection. Hit Delete and you end up with only the shadows in our colour 33. So now I can delete my slab which was a temporary measure and that shadow as well. Now we can see that most of the floor plan is in shadow and if you wanted to darken up an area of the floor you just select it and make it a semi-transparent fill like this or you could use the fill tool with some sort of contrasting color and simply use a magic wand to fill the areas which are actually the areas of sun and then delete the big shadow and that's the extent of the light or the sun penetration into the building through the curtain wall at the front foyer.